Um, yeah, and then then we start getting into the stereotypes. Ooh, Can we talk about the creepy eyed lady? Oh yes, we need to talk about girl. her for oh my freaking god! There is this girl who has the biggest eyes in on the Hello, planet. Pat. <laughs> oh dear God! And she never closes them. No, she does close them. It's just very, oh. very rarely do you see her close. But it's just that the same, ex- same expression. Just I you know if she's like, I'm staring into your soul. And she does feel like you're. Not. And her cat does the same. Yeah, apparently, thing. <laughs> apparently, her cat is a clairvoyant because somehow it. It, it makes predictions. But, but we're, we're not even going to have... We, we can't even dance around this. It <laughs> it shits out predictions. <laughs> As, I, 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 it, it, I, I shit you not. <laughs> it, they're literally pulling predictions out of their ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, we are not kidding here. The cat takes poops, which form letters, and a lot of those times those letters are the... F- the first letters in the names of the kids in the school, and every time that it poops a letter, uh, that person has a major thing happen to them. But what if you have somebody who has the same, for, who has a, a name with the same first letter? Then how do you? Apparently, that never Rudy. came up in that classroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's oh god, that girl and that cat, <laughs> like they. I was so fucking unnerved seeing that because, like, I don't know what it's supposed to be a reference to. I guess maybe a... maybe like Children of the Corn or something. Yeah, I, something like that. I think it's just Tim Burton just being, you know, just being creepy because, like, there's a lot of themes that are consistent in a lot of Tim Burton films, a lot of Tim Burton movies. Like, for example, the color scheme of black, white, and gray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's always a consist. That's always a constant theme of Tim Burton. Also. Tim Burton does a lot of movies where the central character is usually some kind of outcast mm-hmm. in some way. I mean, for ex- I mean, it, it, it's an obvious example with Frank and Weenie. You know, you have Victor who's, you know, he has parents who is isolate. You know, worried about his kid being isolated, worried about, um, worried about, you know, worried about you know not having enough friends. You know, just being by himself. You know. Yeah, but here's the weird thing. Like, they try to make this kid seem like an outcast, you know, because he's all into science and not into sports like the other kids. But here's the thing. The other kids are into science, too. And, in fact, they're kind of more hardcore about it. Like, to the point where, like, they obsess over it. Because, like, they're actually going at each other's throats in order to win a simple science fair. (laughs) I mean, like, and they even... Once they hear that, you know, uh, Victor's able to resurrect the dead... They immediately jump on this and they try exploiting the hell out of it. And they, like I said, these and kids, how. <laughs> like these kids, they make Victor look normal. So when his dad is saying like, "Oh, I'm afraid of my son being weird," it's like, have you seen the other kids in the neighborhood? Your kid's fucking Jesus compared to these kids. <laughs> You're the mayor. It's kind of weird. Oh it's my god, the mayor. Look, you may as well just saw a stamp. I am evil on his forehead. <laughs> Or I am self-centered, or whatever, you know, just... Yeah, this guy, um, he's the typical grumpy neighbor, but it just so happens he's also mayor, and of course, you know, he's extremely nosy, he's always, you know, looking out on Victor when he really has no reason to, and he's... Always finding complaints. Yeah, and he's always pissed off, and even with his, uh, his niece, um, he's always pissed off with her, and... Yeah, like I mean, he's not—he's not real detrimental. I think there's only the only he only does two real big things in the movie that are like really like bad. This New Holland Day, something like uh, that. Dutch, uh, Dutch, Dutch Day. Day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, like he's more of a background character. I mean, compared to the kids, the kids are the real bad guys of this movie. Uh-huh. Well, if, if, if anything, like if if I had to, if I had to pick out one. If I had to pick out one single, one single bad guy, I want to say I want to go with the Boris Karloff character because he's the one who, he was the one who kind of asked first. I mean, the other two, like 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 um, like the fat kid and the the stereotypical Asian. I'm just going to call him that because that's, that's pretty, pretty much all there is. Something cool. beginning with a T. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't pronounce. I can't yeah. pronounce it. But um, like the like the one that looks like Boris Karloff. That's the because he's the one who started asking. He was one who 
kind of, you know, started prying into it. It was kind of his idea, you know, the, to for everyone to kind of jump in on it. Well, and he does get his just desserts in the end. He, he does get mummified, sort of. <laughs> true. I don't know. It's like, I kind of leaned more towards him, the Igor character, and, uh, what's his name? The, the, the Asian kid. Takahashi or something. Yeah, but yeah, but they do change though. They do learn. Like, they do learn their lesson. Like they do. They do go to Victor for help afterwards. Well, yeah, because they well, that's because their problems have just become overwhelming beasts, and there there's nothing they can do. I, I, th- I think they're all equal antagonists. To be honest, like even when they do realize that they messed up, you know, like they don't apologize or anything. They don't get punished. Like re- really. Because, like, these kids are just flat-out greedy. I mean, first the Igor kid finds out, you know, he's like, okay, you're going to help me with my science fair, or I'm going to tell everyone about your dog. Does it. Igor, Victor tells him, don't tell anyone about this. He's like, okay, I won't. Five seconds later, hey, Asian kid, hey, fat kid, look what I got. And they find out, and then the uh, Boris Karloff character finds out, and suddenly they're all like, all right, now we're going to break into this kid's house, we're going to find out how he did it, and we're going to bring all of these other animals to life. You know, forget the science behind it, you know, just do the basic, you know, yeah. kite on a string thing. They never really explained the science behind, like, any of this. Like, like I said, it's all pseudoscience. <laughs> but, but just electri- the-, but the, the, the way you just need to know it is that electricity bring thing- it brings things back to life. That, that's that's the simple of it. Well, apparently electricity could also, like, fuse DNA together. Oh, like, the bat, like the bat and the, ca- <laughs> the, bat and the cat. Yeah. And there's your nightmare is, fuel for the week. That is the most terrifying thing that happens in this movie. That was probably the scariest moment yeah. in the movie. Mm-hmm. That and the rat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. But that was sort of more of a jump scare. That was more. That was more of a jump scare. I saw it from like a mile away. I'm just like, okay, yeah. where is it? That where thing is was it? still terrifying, though. And speaking, you still, of, you still jumped out of your seat. Yeah. Hell yeah, he jumped yeah. out of my seat. Speaking of it's... jump scares, sort of, um, I wouldn't recommend seeing it in 3D because I mean, we saw it in 2D, and you can obviously spot when they are trying to throw 3D at you. There was that one spot, like yeah. when um, when Victor's at the graveyard and he's digging up and he's digging up Sparky. And some cat just comes out and just like, you you know, screams at him. And it just like pops out at you. I'm just just, just like... It really has nothing. I hate those... And and seriously, I hate those moments. Every time when I go see a 3D movie, like, it's like kind of like the the old 3D movies when they came out in the 50s did this. Some of the later 3D movies still did this. There's always that one scene... Where they like pop out, you know, where it's like, like I call it like the hand grab, like like it kind of goes out and it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're in th- we're here to remind you, it's in 3D, <laughs> we're coming at you. I'm just like, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, you, you've just we know it it's in 3D. It possible. said so on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing about this movie is that it kind of like goes back and forth between you know making subtle little. Um, like, you know, references to movies and, like, popular things and stuff, which, like, you you don't catch it first, but then you think back and it's like, huh, yeah, that's pretty clever. And then there are other times where they just flat-out throw things at you, and you're like, really? Really? Mm-hmm. Like, the fact that Victor's last name is Frankenstein? Like, there's no alteration of it. He's not, he's not Victor Stein. He's not Victor Frank. No, he's Victor Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. Yeah, and, and no, it's Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then uh, the uh, the girl, uh, the goth girl, I guess his love interest, but it's, was you know, it never... Was Jackie, s- I think her name is? Yeah. No, 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 it was um, Elsa. Elsa. Yeah. It was yes. El- Elsa Van Helsing. Played by uh, Winona Ryder. It's Elsa Van Helsing, and, I, and, and when I first heard that, I'm like, "Really?" At first, I'm like, "Oh, it's a, it's a." And then I thought, "Well, wait, that's Dracula. And this is Frankenstein." I'm just like, "Well, I get- but, but, but then again, then again, it goes back to, you know, it's horror. It's it's a homage to horror, to classic horror. So obviously, you know, you're gonna have Dracula in there. In fact, there was one part where they actually you see the the family watching the t te- watching the movie on the TV, and it's Horror of Dracula, the first uh, the first Dracula movie with Christopher Lee in it as playing as Dracula. Christopher Lee cameo. <laughs> and it's a Hammer film, nonetheless. I'm just like, hmm. 
But hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's a. No, here's the thing. Like, if um the fact that they named her Van Helsing, like, I, I don't take issue with the fact that you know that you know once again they blatantly just gave her the name of a popular like horror movie icon. But it's the fact that they didn't do anything with it. No. Like the I char- know. the character of the girl really is like really does nothing. Aside like, from be the love interest. Yeah, is she really? Al- she doesn't participate with the other kids in the science experiment. I don't really see her much as a love interest or much of. She's something. She's something for the kid to save. Yes. That's all she is. Yeah. But the thing is, like, if she was, you know, like the other kids, like maybe even the leader of the kids, you know, where she was trying to hunt down but she the to, dog. But or... she seemed much older, though. That's the thing. Yeah, that's weird. I guess she got held back or something. <laughs> but, uh... No, the thing is, like, if you're going to give someone the name Van Helsing, make them a monster hunter. You know, do what the... You know, pay tribute to the character. But she does nothing. She has the name for no reason other than to just throw the name in there. Yeah, I know. <sighs> but, hmm. but, yeah, like we said, um... Yeah, like, she's she's useless. Uh, her dog, you know, tribute to Bride of Frankenstein. That's it. Yeah, that's pretty... I mean... There's actually there's more of a love story between the dogs the do- between yeah. the dogs than the humans. I know. And it's really cute. It is cute. Yeah. I, I I I I agree one set more. That's one set more. <laughs> um I agree I agree with you on that. I mean, yes, it is um it is it, it is a cute l- little thing and I like and I like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, they really go to great lengths to establish that uh, mm-hmm. in that relationship, particularly, oh, I mean, it's it's like the saddest thing when uh, when Frank and Weenie dies, and you, you like in the beginning of the movie, you see like the two of them, like they they're they're separated by a fence, and Frank and Weenie like will occasionally they like they uh, push, put a ball, yeah, yeah they push, push a ball, the ball in. and you know she'll she'll come and be you know playful, affectionate, and you know play around with him. And then uh, Frank and Weenie, excuse me, Spar- uh, Sparky dies, and you just see her like sitting by the fence waiting for him to uh, to push the ball back, and I'm like, oh god! Better romance than Twilight. <laughs> 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 no, like that's one thing they really did a lot better than the original because they actually did have uh, that dog. That dog yeah. But she doesn't appear to like, like the, the very, very end. yeah the very very end, and then you know she she sniffs him, she gets shocked, she gets like the white strip in her hair, and that's about it. But in this, they actually establish and build up the relationship, which is pretty mm. cool. 